Today, we're gonna to talk about three things to consider when pricing your course. Knowing what to price your course can be a huge challenge for coaches and trainers and course creators. People are scared that if they price it too high, no one will buy, you know, or they're new to the industry and they think that they need to price it low because they're a new court, a coach. This is a new course for them, but that is not the right strategy to have when it comes to pricing your course. I don't want you pricing out of fear or the belief that you aren't worth what you want to sell it for. Instead, I want you to price your course because there is intention and strategy behind it. And we are going to walk through this today um, in this episode as I share three things to consider when pricing your course. You're listening to the Badass is the New Black podcast. I'm Chrissy Chin, your host here to teach you how to build an online business that you love and in a way that allows you to work a little bit less so you can enjoy a whole lot more. My hope is that you've showed up to today's episode ready to learn something new and will be inspired to take imperfect action in your business right away. I won't make you wait any longer. Let's dive in. Before we dive into today's topic, if you are at the beginning stages of your business, you haven't had any kind of formal training on entrepreneurship or building a profitable business online, then I want to invite you to a masterclass called Concept to Cash. In this masterclass, I will teach you my four-step framework to building a profitable business online that you love. It's totally free. You can sign up for this at thechrissychin.com forward slash masterclass. Okay, let's dive into today's topic. So three things to consider when pricing your course. I want you to feel confident about what you are putting out there and make sure that you are pricing it for a win-win scenario. So what is that win-win scenario? It's when you get paid and your customers are ecstatic with what they get for what they paid. So the first thing to consider when pricing your course is where your customer is in their journey, okay? If they are at the beginning stages of their journey, then a lower priced course may be more in line with where they are. When they're in the beginning stages, they're a little bit more unsure um, as to where they're going or if they want to invest. Think about someone at the very beginning stage of something. They're a little bit unsure about themselves. They lack the confidence in the beginning stage. Um, you know, they're not sure if they'll be able to get the results that maybe were promised to them. And so they're just less willing to invest um, a lot of money into something. Now, I'm not saying that that's impossible, but it's something to consider when pricing your course, thinking about your ideal customer at the beginning stage. Is this person typically a little bit more timid to open their wallet? Do they need more trust built between you? So I would say that beginner courses usually are under $300. Now you could go up to $500, but typically they're $97, $197, $297. So think about your course and who your ideal customer is for this course that you've created. And then ask yourself, where is this, this person, my ideal customer, where are they at in their journey? And is this going to affect um, how much they want to invest? Now, my entire business, this Chrissy Chin coaching business revolves around someone who wants to build a business online and sell courses or have a membership site. So I need to ask myself when I'm looking at courses that I create and offer, is this person at the very beginner stage where they're trying to decide, you know, and launch their business online, or have they been working towards this business online for a while and they've been generating an income and they're ready to take it to the next level? because the willingness to invest can be different at different stages. You might get a lot more people through the door at the very beginning stage if you have a lower priced offer. And so typically the goal is to get someone through that door to build more trust, right? In the beginning, they might not know you. Maybe they just saw this video on YouTube and they have no idea who you are. And so through your free content, you're building trust, but then also maybe there's that smaller priced course at the beginning 
that you can offer them so that they invest a little bit and then they build more trust with you so that as they continue on in their journey and move up through your product suite, they are willing to invest more and more. And, and so they'll say yes to that next thing that you have to offer. Okay. So where your customer is in their own journey with the problem that you're solving. The second thing to consider when pricing your course is where your product fits in your product suite. Now, if you want to learn more about a product suite, then you can go listen to an interview that I did with amazing Amanda Colby. This was season three, episode 26, where we talk about a product suite. We talk about creating a signature product. So if, if I said the word product suite and you were like, what is that? <laughs> I need to know more. Then after this, go listen to that episode. But let's talk about where this course is. Is it the very first product? in your product suite. So, you know, essentially it's a, uh, your product suite is everything that you offer. Okay. So is this course that you are trying to price right now, is it at the very beginning of your product suite? Is it in the middle or is it at the end? Similarly to where someone is in their journey, because typically our product suite is designed and developed to follow someone's journey. The beginning of our product suite, they enter at a certain stage in their journey. And then as they move on through your product suite, they progress in their own journey, right? So there's always something for them to purchase next. So you can also ask yourself, you know, what am I offering after this course? Because we want to make sure that there is or will be that next step in their journey or in their purchases so that they will keep paying you. We want repeat customers, even though this is a course and it's a one-time purchase, we don't want one and done. We want to have repeat customers so that you can generate not just $200 off your $200 course, but you can generate $2,000 off of that customer over time because they have purchased one course, maybe purchased a second course, done a mastermind with you, joined your membership, you know, whatever it is. So let's take a quick look at the model of a low ticket offer. A low ticket offer funnel um, is where you have a low ticket. It, it, the funnel is typically like a three part thing. You have your first uh, little mini course that you offer at a really low price point, typically $7 to $47. And then when someone says, yes, they click buy, they want to buy that you offer them an upsell. This is again, a low ticketed, um, low price point offering. That's that next thing. Like, gosh, I just need to have that now. Also, it's going to make my life easier. So you price that again, you know, seven to $47, keeping it super low. And then once they purchase that, you send them to an offers page, a one-time offer that offers them that next thing that they're going to want. That's typically a little bit higher priced, $77 to $147. So you've actually, you know, turned this one low ticket price into, you know, $150 or $200 offering because you've offered them three things kind of right off the bat. They're all lower price point items. So the idea behind a low ticket offer is not necessarily to generate profit. However, there are definitely some people out there that are generating a profit from a low ticket offer funnel. But the main purpose and what I see most commonly is that these funnels are set up and designed to generate qualified leads, leads that are willing to spend money and are going to be ideal customers for that higher ticketed item that you have for them next. And that is is where you're going to make money and generate the profit in your business. So the strategy is to price it low to get qualified leads in the door because the intention is that they will then buy your higher ticketed course, 400, 500, $1,000, $5,000 offering that you have. Okay. Because we're trying to draw in people that are going to be great leads for our higher course, we offer a ton of value at a low price point to get them into our funnel. Now, this is a scenario where we could offer a ton of value and transformation could be huge, but we are pricing it very low because it's really just functioning as that lead generator for our next offering. However, the reason that we charge for this is because we really want to attract qualified leads that 
will open up their wallet. We don't just want free seekers here. So again, what's the course you're creating? Is it a, a kind of a lead generator for a higher ticketed course, a higher price point course, or is this like your course? All right. If the answer is yes, it's going to help me draw in qualifying leads for that next big thing, then maybe you price it lower at a lower price point. If this course is, you know, your big kahuna, your second offering, then maybe, or maybe it's your signature course, then maybe you have um, a higher price point. Maybe it's $500, you know, $500 to $2,000 anywhere in there. All right, and then the third thing to consider when pricing your course is the transformation or the result that your course will provide. To keep things super simple, think of it um, as little transformation, little price point, big transformation, bigger price point. So for example, a weekend workshop that helps someone, maybe you're teaching, um, you know, get clarity on your next offering. So by the end of the workshop, they're going to have clarity on their next offering. It's a quick win, but it's a little transformation. Maybe you're charging $49 for that, maybe $7 for that. Again, low price point. Whereas opposed to if you have a, um, a course that's going to teach you how to create a complete low ticket offer funnel, then that has a much bigger transformation. You're going from no funnel to complete funnel at the end that's gonna be a higher price point, bigger transformation, bigger price point. So this is something else to consider. What is the transformation? I have given you an example of, um, you know, sometimes many courses having big transformations, but we've priced them lower because it's someone, the very beginning stages of their journey, or it's the entry level of, you know, a funnel series that we're doing. So again, these are things to consider. It doesn't mean all three of these things have to be, you know, in line. We're considering these things when figuring out how to price the course. So little transformation, small amount, big transformation, much more costly because there's a bigger win. So the price of your course really ultimately lands on what your customers are willing to pay to get the result of your course that you're going to help them achieve. So <clears throat> if you're offering a mini course that will give someone a small but quick win, this may be more effective at a lower price point. Again, what's the intention here? Are we offering the, this to get them in the door or is this the big kahuna? Now your signature course that will generate majority of the profit in your business, that's likely going to be a higher price point. So I'll give you a, you know, real life example in my business, build a blissful business. This is a course that I created. It actually offers a really big transformation. It helps someone set up the foundation of their business and their brand so that they can build a profitable business online. That's a huge transformation going from, you know, essentially no brand and, and business presence online to having tons of clarity in your messaging, knowing exactly who your ideal client is, having all of your brand visuals set up, um, knowing who you are trying to attract in, you know, getting set up online and social media so that you attract your customer. By the end of the, this course, like the foundation of your business is, and your brand is set up. That's a huge transformation. But who is the ideal client here? The ideal customer or client is someone in the beginning stages of building their business, right? As someone who has never had really training on building a brand or building a business online. Now, there are many successful entrepreneurs or experienced entrepreneurs that have leveraged build a blissful business. Most of them, they've either wanted to rebrand, so they're like, great, I'm going to go through this course, or they are new to offering a digital product. They've never offered a digital product before, and so they take advantage of this course and kind of, let's go back to the foundations of building your brand and your business and see if things are still aligned and see how I can modify things to build this business that I absolutely love and is aligned with the lifestyle I'm working towards. Okay, but it was developed for people who are at the beginning stages of their business and want to build this foundation to really build and scale online. So while it does offer a big transformation, I have it at a lower price point because one, they're at the beginning of their journey and two, it's at the beginning of my product suite. 
It's kind of the entry level thing that gets someone in, gives them a huge win, builds lots of trust with me so that they can move on to the next thing and find more wins and grow their business bigger. Okay. So I was considering really factor number one, where's my customer at in their journey? And factor number two, where is it my product suite? And that was trumping this third one, which is the transformation. Let's look at another example. So I have a mini course. It's for podcast hosts that do interviews. And I teach them a system that they can implement into their podcasting process to where they can just show up, record, and be done. Now, if you are a podcast host out there, you know how many hours upon hours it takes to really get your pod, get a good podcast up and running and online on the interwebs for someone to listen to. It's very time consuming, more time consuming than you thought when you started a podcast. So I'm, I'm helping a podcast host get back probably 10 to 20 hours of their life by teaching them this system that they can implement into their podcasting process. Now they're going to gain time back, which for some people is really valuable. How much can you do in 10 to 20 hours? You could maybe create a new small offering in that time, you know, but I price this course at $37 the scalable podcast system. It's a super low price point. The results that my students get are amazing. The feedback, the um, reviews, I'm like, what is that word? The reviews that they've given, the testimonials are amazing. So there's huge transformation there, but I'm considering again, where is it at in my product suite? What is the, and then what is the intention of the course? The intention of the course is to bring in um, generating, generate leads, This is all like insider knowledge, you guys. You guys are getting the full scoop behind the scenes. I'm not scared to to share strategies with you that I use in my business because they work. And I want you to be able to implement these strategies into your business so that it works for you. So I'm an open book sharing all of my secrets here. Um, You know, but then, so after they come in and generate that lead, there's another offering called the Profitable Podcast Bundle. Now this offering is priced higher than the scalable podcast system. Why? Because the result or the transformation that someone gets is seen as even more valuable. It actually has a monetary Um, a bigger monetary value to it, okay? Because I teach how to uh, monetize their podcast, how to generate income from their podcast by leveraging advertisements. So this is actually gonna be a direct correlation with the amount of money that they bring into their business. So I suppose, you know, person A and person B could, could argue that one transformation isn't bigger than the other, but from a monetary aspect, Um, It is more. So I guess that's something else you can consider. Does your product help someone make money? But that's not one of the three that we are talking about. Um, Some other amazing examples are one of my mentors, Amanda Genther, who's awesome, sells um, a low ticket offer. It's called sales page in a day. Maybe you've heard me talk about it before for $37. Now, if you've ever written a sales page or designed a sales page, it can take a lot of time. So the fact that you get this template already designed for you, the copy written, you just have to kind of plug and play for $37 is huge. You know, you're, you're getting it done in one day versus maybe a week. Okay. So it is, you know, it is a great transformation, but compared to the next offering that she has, which is this, um, the low ticket funnel formula program that she has our course by the end of that course, you'll have completed an entire low ticket funnel. You'll have your low ticket offer funnel created, you know, by the end. So going from no funnel to a complete funnel launched, (laughs) making money. So that transformation in comparison is huge from just having a sales page created to having a complete funnel that your sales page gets plugged into, right? And so that is a much higher price point for that bigger transformation of having a complete funnel created versus just the sales page of that funnel. Okay. That, that program was actually what I used to create my low ticket funnel. And so I will put the links in the show notes for that. If you're interested, um, it's super awesome. She's super amazing, but it's really a great example of kind of a smaller transformation 
um, with a lower price point to a bigger transformation, higher price point. And again, what is the intention there? The intention is to bring in leads, qualifying leads for that next offering. But it also does follow the, this thing that we're considering of what's the transformation, smaller transformation, smaller price point, bigger transformation, bigger um, price point. But at the end of the day, regardless of, you know, number one, where your people are in their journey, number two, where is it in your product suite? And number three, how big of a transformation are you offering? You really need to effectively communicate the benefits of your course, or your product, and the benefits that you can provide to someone. Because if you aren't doing that, then it doesn't really matter what you price your course, low or high, people aren't gonna see the value, they're not gonna buy it. I don't care if it's $7, if you're not effectively communicating the benefits that someone can have by purchasing what you have to offer, they're not gonna buy it. But these three things that you consider um, that we've talked about today will help you price your course effectively um, in your product suite. And as always, I appreciate you tuning in. If you are on YouTube, I would love for you to let me know in the comments where you're at in your pricing journey, or if you found any of this information valuable. Um, you know, so leave that in the comments for me. Um, of course, if you're watching on YouTube, Hey there, um, definitely subscribe so that you can be notified when the next video comes out. If you're listening on podcast, Apple podcast, Spotify, any um, popular podcast platform, make sure you again, hit that subscribe button so you can be notified when the next episode is live. For links to anything that I mentioned in this episode, you can visit the show notes found under this YouTube video or on my website, thechrissychin.com. Um, just find podcasts in the tab and you can search that podcast. Until next week, get out there, take imperfect action every single day um, and take that next step in your journey. We'll see you later. Bye. Until next time, remember done is better than perfect, my friend, and to channel your inner badass and take imperfect action every single day.